Hello, everybody. Hey, IOTA Moonshots. Welcome. The second space that you're joining of us today already. <laughs> All right. Let's wait a few minutes for the ranks to fill up here. Already seeing a bunch of people here. Hey, Ray. Hey, Kilian. Hey, Birkan. Sunset, we see you. Welcome. How's it going, Ronaldo? I'm doing well. How are you? Awesome. <laughs> yeah, likewise, likewise. Very excited to be throwing some questions at you today. Where are you calling from, actually? I'm calling from Nicaragua. Ah, interesting. Yeah. All right. I hope the time is not too inconvenient for you. No, it's, it's okay. It's uh, 10 a.m. Ah, perfect, perfect. All right. So we get you with all the energy of the morning hours. That's perfect. Yeah, with a jar of coffee. Right <laughs> <laughs> yes, yes. I see another jar of coffee enjoyer. That is how I like to consume my coffee as well. Yes. <laughs> okay, okay. So, all right. I think we have a bunch of people here already. Great to see all of you. Hey, Martin. Hey, Rom. Hey, Vapo. Hey, Yeo. And Lector, we see you too. All right, so yeah, let me kick off with the introduction. So welcome everybody. This is Build Sphere number four, how the time is running already. Um, a few words about this format. Build Sphere is aimed to give the community access to the builders if there is any questions that you want to ask to the projects that are populating the IOTA chain, then this format is for you. Uh, every um, every few days we are going to be spinning up an episode and you will have a chance to be asking questions live and under the Twitter comments and then we will try to pick them up and have them answered. So towards the end of the episode, you can raise your hand, you can get on stage, you can ask your question to Token Labs. And for all the projects that are interested in joining us here on BuildSphere, we are having a form posted with this recording where you can apply and then it would be our pleasure to be hosting you here in BuildSphere. All right, admin stuff done. Let's get right into it. So, Renaldo, why don't you introduce yourself and your role that you play at Token Labs? Okay. Um, well, my name is Reinaldo Gonzalez, and I am the CTO of Token Labs. And well, I have been programming from uh, since 2018, and since 2022, I've been working on Web3. Um, well, I... Oh, we just lost you. Um, we've been hearing that you started in 2017 and then the connection dropped. Yeah, I can see the speaking bars moving, but I think we cannot hear you. Is it only me? I don't think so. Yeah, Ronaldo, if you can hear me, then I would suggest that you disconnect and Oh, oh, you're back. My, my phone got, got blocked. You're back. You're okay. back. Hello. You, uh, sorry. Yeah, we, we lost you when you were saying that you started in uh, 2017 with uh, working in Web3. Okay, okay. So, well, and I am here, well, developing Shimmer Yota, so I'm excited to uh, continue learning more about Web3 and, uh, and Web3 community as well. Yeah, sounds great. Uh, Bonti, we can see you requesting. You will have your chance at the end of this episode to uh, ask a question and we'll be happy to let you on stage. All right. Uh, yeah, Ray, mm -hmm. um, tell us a little bit about Token Labs. Like, what was the idea behind it? What is it about? Please give us the gist of it. Okay. Um, well, when I started uh, working with Web3, it, it has a really um, hard uh, let's see, let's say, um, you need to, to, to know a little bit of programming and also solidity. So the basic uh, languages, so it's really hard at the beginning to deploy a token. So we would like to create a platform where users could create their tokens with a management and manage to those tokens in an easy way. So that's why token apps born uh, to avoid people um, <clears throat> using Remix, Sarhat, or any other tool to to deploy their tokens. And also, they they need a, mm, a graphic interface to interact with a token. So that's why the board. And also we want to offer a high level security to their community 
uh, and also a book free and outdated token contract. And that way we can ensure, uh, sorry about the noise, <laughs> uh, in that way we can ensure uh, that the tokens uh, don't, they don't have um, some functions that can make a repool or uh, ban some wallets and that way they can steal your money. And also we have some uh, batches to let you know if a token could be uh, in a way harmful if they haven't if they have not uh, born or locked their I think we just lost you again so you can so you can be you're back uh, you're back in that way so you can you can see all that uh, flags on our platform yeah it sounds uh, like a very cool idea. I mean, it's easy to, to wrap my head around it. Um, I think there has been, um, I mean, personally, I like to always um, try out a bunch of things. So with JetGPT coming around, I was feeling, oh, wow, mm -hmm. maybe now I can deploy uh, tokens of my own. But yeah, getting JetGPT to uh, generate code that you can put into Remix, not as easy as a task uh, as I thought it would be. So yeah, I think that is very cool to be able to develop, well, not develop, but to create assets mm -hmm. without having to uh, know any code. And then also giving people the idea that <clears throat> there is some checks done when people are using your creator. So they have mm -hmm. some idea of what functions does this code entail? So I think that is a very, very cool idea. And I think also I want to mention here Satoshi93, in case that you're listening, I think that is tapping into the idea that you brought up earlier today. Just in case you're listening, then I think you will uh, know where we are getting at with this. Yeah, very cool. So uh, I've been visiting the Token, site, Token Labs website and I've been looking at a veil that has yet to be lifted. So the Token Labs website is not yet functional, but when it is, like, what can users expect when the website is live? Okay, uh, we, um, you will see uh, a clean platform in that way you can find all the tools easily. And we hope an, in an intuitive UI because <laughs> uh, even if, all the features are uh, are on there. Maybe some some users get lost, but we try to make it the easiest as we can. So you you will all only need your your MetaMask wallet to interact with the app. Uh, at the time we um, and also you can start creating your tokens, uh, add liquidity, uh, burn your LP tokens, or also lock it as you. As you wish. Um, also, you will have a, an updated token if you request it. Um, you can lock your own tokens also. Uh, you can vote. Uh, you you can vote tokens on the on the main um, token page. You will have some some features there, and some other tools that are coming. We are working on them to make it uh, cool, and also. You will have a single overview page where you can, where where the owner can add more info, like uh, social media, their website, uh, description, and also you can see our security patches right there, and you can share that that link uh, anywhere. So that will be a public public information. Uh, well, at the moment, that's that's it. Yeah, very cool. So everybody will be able to create a token uh, permissionless, right? So nobody mm -hmm. has to ask for your permission to to be able to do that. So no. I'm, I'm wondering, uh, like, what kind of assets do you think will be created? Like, where do you think people are going to take your project? What kind of assets uh, are people going to create? Anything in this direction that would be very interesting to see. What are people going to do with Token Labs? Okay. Um... We are expecting that anyone can use our, our platform to launch their tokens. Uh, in that way, uh, that's the that's the mission of Web3 that anyone can can join. So we want to to follow the that uh, that idea, but with some securities, with some security, and and you can create your your mimi your mimi coins, 
and also you can create a token with a real utility like if you want to create your project and you need uh or you like to to bring that project to web3 so you are welcome to use our platform and and well uh we don't we don't have a, di a direct a direct support for every for every token uh, but you can contact contact us and and we can and we can help you if you if you need so we can we can help you in and everything you need and see what what can we do yeah, awesome. So it sounds like it's worth to be early to Token Lab so that um, as long as you still have capacities of uh, yeah, offering support to, to people wanting to launch assets on your website, I think, uh, that might change in the future. So um, yeah, very interesting. Um, I was also like wondering, you have been talking about, uh, everybody can, of course, use Token Labs, but um, you have also talked about that you want to make sure that these assets that are created via Token Labs, that they are somewhat secure. So I'm wondering, how do you balance those both things? Are there any hard criteria that uh, tokens assets have to follow when they are created via Token Labs? Okay, um, at the beginning, uh, our token contract uh, is not uh, mintable in the way that you can create, you can mint more tokens later. So uh, you have to be careful uh when you create your token so you have only one time uh to to add the supply so if you cannot mint tokens later and also the contract is renounced at the beginning so mm, no no one anyone can can have control of that contract anymore and it doesn't have a, a blacklist uh function so you cannot uh, blacklist anyone also. And it's a simple uh, RC20 contract. So in a way we we, we want to, uh, also you cannot set uh, fees, but maybe if community would like to have that function, well, we are at the time maybe to to do it, but at the, at the beginning we, we don't have to, to have a uh, fees uh, in the contract because uh, we want we would like to to do a a token that only have the basic uh, supply and offer uh, low. Yeah, I think that makes sense. Of course, there are niche applications where it makes sense to have a blacklist or being able to mint more tokens. But um, yeah, I've been um, digging around the meme coins um myself for some years now and of course most of the time these functions are used for um yeah malicious intent rather than mm -hmm. yeah bringing real utility to to the holders so um yeah i think that is perfectly reasonable to be imposing some restrictions so that people do not get burned when dealing with assets uh, from token labs yeah i think yeah. that is making a lot of sense um yeah so also i'd be very keen to learn your um a little bit about your philosophy on a successful token distribution. So how do you envision that to work? Um, will people create the full supply via token labs and then uh, sell it off somewhere else? Or what do you think is going to be the next step for people that create an asset on token labs? Okay, um, at, at the beginning, users can add the liquidity at the desk and start trading the token um, and they, they would be in charge of token distribution at the beginning, but we are working on on the optimization of token distribution in our launchpad contract, um, and also a multi sender in case the uh, the owner or the creator wants to um, to send uh, multi to multi multiple users um, to multi users, um, and also. I think the connection just dropped. I'm also not seeing speaking bars this time around. So yeah, not hearing you. I think the connection just broke off. Rona, I see your request. We are going to definitely, uh, and you're back. Awesome. Okay, so in that way, uh, the distribution of the token 
we we hope it would be uh, in a easiest way, and so the 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 creator can 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 send mm -hmm. the, their tokens easily. Right. Yeah, I think that is also making sense. So do you also plan for an option that uh, liquidity is automatically added and all of these functions? Hello. Yeah, it wouldn't be a real Twitter space without some hiccups. So we are totally in line with that tradition. And yes. Okay. Ronaldo, we have okay, you back. Sorry. Yeah, awesome. Yeah. <laughs> well, <laughs> what did I... Yeah, we, uh, I was asking you whether you're planning to have the option that assets created via Token Labs, that they can also automatically add to the liquidity without mm -hmm. the yeah. creator having to push more buttons. Uh, uh, sorry. Did I come through? Should I repeat the question? Yes, yeah, so please, please. Yeah, I was asking whether there is any option for asset creators that their assets automatically are added to liquidity, for example. Uh, yeah, in the launch part, it will be that... Uh, not see it would be a um a tool that it will it will uh have also the create the creation token function and also the liquidity at the same time so mm -hmm. it would be a single function to to say something so it, it would we would like to have the features that if a beginner uh, or an advanced developer can use our platform. So uh, if uh, a beginner comes to our platform and and say, okay, what comes first? So we have we will have those features uh, to say, okay, uh, are you a beginner? So this is the road you, you can follow. So uh, create the token and also you have to the liquidity at the same time. Mm -hmm. Awesome. In, in the way. And if you want to, to do it by step by step, you are also welcome to do it. Right. Yeah, I think that is striking all the right notes with uh, people looking to, to launch their own token. Uh, very interesting. So we've been talking about token creation quite some time now. Um, how does it look on a token labs token? Is anything like that on the horizon? Can you talk about that? Um, yeah, anything in this direction would be very interesting for us to learn. Okay, no, we are not planning to have a, a token because we want to be flexible uh, on any or any chain. So, mm, and we all we only want to use the the native token of the network. Um, so, not it's not going to be a a token for token apps. Right. Yeah. Okay. Um... Then I've been digging a little bit through your Twitter, and I think you have been running a very interesting poll. Um, you have been asking the community whether Token Labs should be launching first on Shiver EVM or IOTA EVM, and the third option was on both chains at the same time. Now, that is very interesting. Um, can you talk a little bit about the results? Did they end up as you were expecting them, and what conclusions do you draw from that? Okay. Um, well, we, we just want to to deploy the, the project on Shimmer and Yota at the same time because um, we want to give you uh, and those two networks to, to deploy your projects at the same time. So you, you don't have to wait uh, too much if you want to have a multi-chain project. So Yeah. Um, and the community, to... was it like... How were they deciding? Were they more in favor of either of those options or were the community pushing for IOTA and Shimmer at the same time? Yeah. Interesting. Yeah, so that is a great result that I would have <laughs> hoped to see exactly like that. Um, yeah, very cool. I think let's get some people here on stage. We have Rolla and Bonti raising their hands before their arms get tired. Let's get Bonti on stage. Um, I'm going to be adding you as a speaker now. Always takes a second to reflect. Okay. Um, looks like he just dropped. That is also a very funny quirk on X Spaces. When you pull somebody on stage, they just lose the connection. So we are going. Aha! There we go. Hey, Monty, how's it going? Hello, how are you? Hello for all. Hello for uh, every uh, people uh, that are available in this meeting. Thank you for looking left. 
Uh, and thank you for uh, Utah for this meeting. Yeah, thank I'm, you for joining. Uh, Let's hear your question, please. Yeah. Okay, okay. Uh, I, I am Adil. Uh, I'm CEO of Bunty Platform. Our platform is uh, for uh, facilitating uh, Android developer and user. Okay. Uh, the Bunty, uh, yes, the Bunty Platform has uh, four uh, a cons a consist of four uh, item uh, that uh, they are uh, blockchain wallet, uh, a cryptocurrency gateway payment SDK module, a smart contract coordinator, and uh, NFT marketplace. Okay, uh, the Bundy platform is very, very useful for all uh, Android developers and anyone who wants to uh, have a Web3 compatible version of uh, Android application. Uh, for example, if, uh, if uh, Bonti, for I'll to, hang on, hang on. Bonti is sorry. Uh, do you have a question for, for Token Labs? I don't really think this is a great platform to be talking about, uh, Bonti. Yeah. Yes, yes. Uh, in my ADR, uh, it, it, is it possible to have coordination uh, with the token lab, uh, for example, for uh, circulate uh, for uh, minting a token and circulating token between the Bounty platform and the token labs? Uh, yeah, so basically, let me rephrase that question. Basically, the gist of what you're asking is whether you uh, would yes. be able to launch a token as well. Now the connections are getting a little bit wonky. Excuse me, can you hear me? Yes, yeah. I can. We are having a little bit of lag, so I'm going Hello. to mute you. No hard feelings, but we uh, are can talking you hear me? over uh, one another. All right, so Token Labs. Hello. <laughs> so Bonti has been asking, essentially, is it possible to... Uh, hello, can you hear me? Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah I'm trying to mute you, Bonti, actually. <laughs> hello. Uh, hello, can you hear me? Yes. All right. That should be fixed. Okay, Ronaldo. So, Bonti is wondering, okay. can they launch a token on Token Labs? I think that's a rather easy question. If they can launch their token or token app. Yes, I think that is the gist of it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They, they can. <laughs> yeah, Bonti, if you want to reach out, I think the Token Labs team is happy to hear from you. And um, yeah, no hard feelings, but we have a little bit of lag, so I had to mute your mic because we were talking over each other. Awesome, Rolla. Let's get you up on stage next. And you're already on stage. That happened rather quickly. All right. So, Rola, please unmute your mic and let's hear your question. Hi, guys. Good evening. Thank you for Hello. Good evening. Uh, so, I have a very quick and straight question to Token Labs. I am developing uh, ways user an interface based e commerce platform, okay. usually for B2B and probably later for B2C clients. Uh, and I'm looking for a you know, mode of payments um, um, you know, as a solution. Um, that we can develop on our own, which will be probably blockchain based. But I want to avoid ERC20 Ethereum network token because we know uh, it's pretty inefficient. So, you know, could you suggest something how I can do without the ERC20 token? And if IOTA would be the appropriate platform for that, if we can use, you know, IOTA platform, IOTA network. Thank you. Okay. Mm. Well, maybe. <laughs> mm. Well, if you are looking for a solution about your payments, maybe. We can talk later because I think it's not well. Well, we are not uh, a payment platform for that. Yeah, I understand that, but you, I can use a platform to create my token, right? That I can use yeah. in my platform as okay, a. Okay, then you can payments, use it. Right? Yeah, right, but right, I want right. to avoid. I, I read on your bio that you do ERC twenty tokens. I don't want to do that. Is there another, any other way that I can use a different network than Ethereum network? Okay, that that yeah, you can you can create your token with us, and we are happy to have your your project running on on our platform yeah but it will be only erc20 token or it can be anything any other network as well uh, at the time just rc token then maybe we we can uh, add some features to nfts and, and we are yeah, I think the question, the question is about the, the network that people can use when launching an asset on Token Labs. And Rolla is asking whether it is only going to be on Ethereum. I already know the answer to that. <laughs> but um, yeah, so uh, Token Labs is going to, as far as I know, premiere on uh, Shimmer and IOTA. Yeah. So yes, that should definitely eliminate some of the efficiency concerns. So um, mm -hmm. yeah. I think it is very safe to assume that the gas costs on IOTA EVM mm -hmm. will look nothing like they do right now on uh, Ethereum. I think that is Ethereum. safe to say. So, yeah. yeah. So it is possible on IOTA and Shimmer platform, right? Yeah. That's cool. Thank you so much. Then I'm going to write you. Uh, I think I can't DM you. I don't know why. But okay. yeah, I'll see how I can yeah, approach you later. Thank you so much.
Awesome. Thank you so you much too. for the question, Rona. Thank, thank you. Have a nice day. All right. So, um, yeah, if anybody else has a question, then please raise your hand now. Um, let's fall back on one of the questions that has been asked on Twitter. And we have crypto simpatico underscore one. He is asking if the tokens created, um, sorry, let me just read the question. <laughs> if the tokens created can be traded, doesn't this pose a risk for investors due to the enormous number of worthless tokens created and also a fragmentation of liquidity? I think I would rephrase that question in a sense like, um, is it not threatening crypto as a whole if anybody can create the tokens and the liquidity mm -hmm. is spreading out across those tokens? Well, um, <clears throat> I, I, I don't, um, but it's in, not going to be a risk as well because uh, each token, it will have their own liquidity. We are not um, safe saving the liquidity in our tokens and, uh, sorry, in our contracts and distribute it, distribute it, sorry, and on each token. So uh, each token have, will have their own uh, liquidity. So it depends on market if the token goes up, down, but it's not under our control. Right. Yeah, I think um, it's, a, it's an interesting question that I'm also uh, not really having an answer to. But like when I'm thinking about the, the stock world, right, it doesn't really hurt other stocks if a new company emerges and starts trading publicly. But uh, yeah, very philosophical question. I like that. Thank you so much. Mm -hmm. Crypto Sympathy for one for asking it. Yeah, okay. Uh, just, just to add, so, uh, uh, I think maybe uh, it would be some tokens with the same names, maybe. Uh, so also you have to be uh careful in that in that way because um we can ensure that uh it won't it won't be some clone tokens in in a way uh because uh, we want to be an open platform so it's also part of your uh of your security to ensure uh it's the right token you are uh going going in also, you can you can check uh, the project uh, website or social media and and be sure that's the right token. So, right, yeah, I think every every uh, person dealing with token addresses should always make sure to to double check. Uh, yeah, certainly there are a lot of ways to um, eliminate any risks on the user side already. So, um, yeah, of course, with all of the uh, security features that are in place, it will never be able to replace people being careful. Uh, checking contract addresses. So yeah, uh, following best security practices, nonetheless, a mm -hmm. good idea, I would say. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. All right. So we have no more hands going up. So that means we have arrived at the end here of Bill Sphere number four. So thank you so much, Ray, for joining. Thank you for all of thank the you, that and, us. Okay. And well, I'm glad to be here. And, and I also want to thank the, the opportunity to be part of the community and and for the support you you have uh, gave us to to continue developing the the platform so thanks awesome thank you so much for showing up uh, if you want to learn more about token labs click on the picture here it will lead you to the twitter profile you will find all the relevant links from there thank you to everybody asking questions here live and on twitter um yeah, so that always only leaves me with pointing out that this episode, as always, has been for informational purposes only. Um, yeah, thanks to everybody and have a great evening. Goodbye. Hopefully, see you for the next Goodbye. episode. Bye bye. See you. Bye. This space was downloaded via spacesdown.com. Visit to download your spaces today.